Hey guys, this is Cam from SoCalSLC.com. So, if you guys have been following along and you watched my last video, then uh, you know that I was driving along, ripping it up, and suddenly the car just died. The engine cut out on me and there was, there was nothing left. So, my father-in-law brought the trailer out, we got the, trail, the car up on the trailer, we brought it home, and then sure enough, as soon as we get it home, the thing fires right back up. So I had a pretty good idea of what the issue might be because I had a similar experience with the car um, a couple of months before I painted it. And it turned out that I had an issue with my high pressure fuel pump. And sure enough, diagnosing this latest issue, it's the high pressure fuel pump once again. So I had to really take a look at what was up with my fuel system to try to understand what might be driving these repeated failures with the high pressure pump. And I thought about all the things that could cause a pump to fail. You know, it's temperature, it's vibration, uh, electrical issues, all that kind of stuff. So I kind of went through the list. And at the end of the day, I, I, I thought that the design was pretty good, but maybe I might have had some vibration issues. I thought, okay, maybe it has to do with the way that I had mounted the pump. As I did more research, come to find out, hey, you know these Bosch 044 pumps? These are, these are pretty popular things to uh, knock off. And unfortunately, in the state of California, you can't purchase a Bosch 044 from a legitimate company like Jags or, or Summit. So uh, the two pumps that I purchased for my car, I purchased through eBay. And of course, eBay, that's where you get all the good stuff, right? It turns out I was able to find a video where a gentleman had done a AB comparison between a legitimate Bosch 044 pump versus a knockoff. And this video was done a couple of years ago. And sure enough, as I watched the video, I found characteristics that he had mentioned or they had highlighted that indicated the pump was most likely uh, a knockoff. And the pump that I purchased uh, was about, uh, it was about a year ago that I purchased this pump. Well, it seems like the guys who are doing these knockoffs have progressed since that video had been made and, uh, and they've learned. And so the, the knockoffs have been getting better, but there's still a couple of things that you can kind of clue in on to figure out if your pump is legitimate or not. So I'll do a quick video walking through what I found with my pump, comparing it to the knockoffs, and then I'll go through uh, the fuel system on the SLC. I kind of explain roughly how it's laid out and designed, and then go over what my solution is, since I can't seem to get a good Bosch 044 pump in California. All right, here we go. So here's my high pressure fuel pump. It's the Bosch 044 unit. I think one of the things to look for is this rolled edge over here i think in the counterfeit units it's a it's a pretty sharp crease here whereas on the legitimate or genuine units it's it's a little bit more rounded there is a pretty sharp crease here which is you know plus one for possible counterfeit i think there's some qualities about the staking or the the pinches here that would also give it away as far as the printing it does say made in the Czech Republic, which is, you know, where the legitimate ones are made. And from what I've read, if the printing is stamped, it's legitimate. And if it was done in kind of like a dot matrix printer style, then it's counterfeit. And this looks to me like it's stamped and not dot matrix style. It does have a helicoil, but from what I understand, the uh, counterfeit ones have helicoils these days. I think the biggest thing that jumps out to me is what it looks like in here. So there's a photo that shows a legitimate versus fake or counterfeit. And this looks more like the counterfeit piece. And I guess the other thing to look at is you see those four kind of posts along the exterior. Those posts are not very clean. There's like uh, little dingleberries hanging off of the edges of each. Like the machining operation was not very good and they didn't come back and clean it. There's a little dingleberry hanging off the edge there. And you know, there's a good likelihood that over time that those pieces would fall off and go into the flow. So I have to imagine that if this was a legitimate Bosch unit, that those would not be there. The other dead giveaway is that the counterfeit pumps have identical length binding posts, whereas the legitimate Bosch units have a longer positive post than the negative. And in this case, you can see they're the same. If this is a counterfeit unit, it looks pretty good. And here's what I've got to replace the Bosch high pressure fuel pump that I had in my system. It's a Phytech surge tank with an integrated in-tank fuel pump, part number 40007. 
Comes really well packaged. It's not going anywhere. And here's what it looks like. Pretty sexy. Very nice. Machined aluminum. Anodized. Looks like the real deal. Unfortunately, this one's already broken. It appears the only kind of luck I have is bad luck. So I installed this in my car. I got it completely plumbed. And then I went to install the electrical. This happened. I was uh, hand tightening this nut down onto the wire. And it literally just popped off right in my hand. I don't know if you can see image quality wise. That surface, that fracture surface does not look very good. Looks like it's got a whole lot of porosity in there. So shout out to the guys at Jags for taking care of me. I've got a replacement pump on the way and this is going back. Uh, the SLC has a fairly basic fuel tank. Basically just a rectangle. So let's imagine that you're driving along and you're running low on fuel. If you make a uh, high G turn, what's gonna happen to that fuel? And it's gonna slosh over to the side like this. Now the issue is if your fuel pickup point is down here, your fuel is all over to one side now and you suddenly run out of fuel over here. So to prevent that, you have a surge tank. To fill that surge tank, you have a pump located down here. It's gravity fed. It then pushes fuel up into the surge tank. And then from a surge tank, you have another pump down here where you then draw fuel. So in a high G maneuver, what's gonna happen is it's gonna slosh around here a little bit, but you're never gonna starve the feed point for this pump. And then from this pump, you go to the engine. So you've got two pumps. You've got a low pressure pump to feed your surge tank, and you've got a high pressure pump to feed your engine. And this ensures that if you're running low on fuel in the main tank, your surge tank, which has a much smaller volume, will never be starved of fuel in a high G maneuver. So the system's a little bit more complicated than what I've shown you here. This is just a very simplified version of what's in the SLC fuel system. So here's a quick comparison of the factory included surge tank against the uh, Phytech unit here. They both essentially do the same job. Uh, you can see volume wise the, the Phytech's a little bit smaller and because the high pressure pump is now inside the surge tank uh, overall internal volume is a little bit smaller but I'm not really worried about that so much. Uh, on the uh, factory included surge tank here we have a dash six uh, adapter fitting here dash six dash six and one of these gets fed by the low pressure pump another one gets fed by the uh, regulator and then this last one here is the return back to the, uh, the, the main tank. Um, down here we have a dash 10 fitting, which uh, feeds the high pressure fuel pump. The reason why it's a dash 10 is because the high pressure fuel pump is gravity fed and you wanna make sure that you feed that pump as best as you can. Make sure you don't starve it. So with the Phytech unit here, you have the same thing, but uh, all these fittings on top, these are all dash six fittings. So this mess that you see right here, this is the, uh, the new fuel system. Let's start off with the uh, electrical. So I have a signal wire coming from the ECU, coming over here. It feeds these two relays, which are then grounded. And once these relays get tripped, they pull power from this positive 12 junction block here, down this wire. And then they feed these two fused wires over here and then each one of these feeds one of the uh, pumps, both the low pressure and the high pressure. Uh, this little button that you see down here, this is an impact switch, so if I get into an accident, car rolls over, whatever, this flips and then it breaks the, the signal from the ECU, shutting the pumps off. You know, the wiring is a bit temporary right now, just so I can have easy access to everything in case I need to troubleshoot. So, as far as the fuel system itself goes, so from down here, we have the exit of the fuel tank, it's a gravity drain, comes down through this line over here, and then goes through this valve right here. So that's just a quick on-off valve so I can turn fuel off if I need to. Fuel then runs down into this filter right over here. It's a 100 micron filter. It gets looped around and goes into that pump right over there, which is the low pressure pump. That's a Walbro 255 uh, liter per hour unit. And then you can see this wire, that, or this line that comes up, and that feeds the um, Phytech surge tank that you see over here. So here's the top of the Phytech surge tank. There's four ports. The low pressure feeds into this line right here, 
feeds the tank and basically continues to cycle. Once this tank gets filled, whatever excess gets pumped in this tank goes up through this line over here and then returns back into the tank uh, right down over there. Inside this tank, you've got a high pressure fuel pump that goes through this red line over here, or red fitting rather, comes through this line over here, through this 40 micron filter down here, loops up through this line here and goes into the fuel pressure regulator. After the fuel pressure regulator, I have a check valve located right here. And then from there, I have fuel running through this line over here and then up into the fuel rail. The LS motors are a returnless fuel system. So whatever excess fuel gets pumped to the engine gets diverted from the fuel regulator, fuel pressure regulator, and then comes back through this line over here. So that's the complete cycle. I don't know how well this is gonna come out in video, but the noise difference between the knockoff Bosch 044 pump versus the Phytech pump is pretty surprising. Here's a clip of the Bosch 044. And here's the Phytech. The Phytech is noticeably quieter. Okay, testing out the new fuel system. Here we go. So for the sake of science, I purchased another Bosch 044 pump from eBay. I know uh, with absolute certainty that this is a counterfeit pump. The uh, seller uh, in their ad states that the packaging is their older packaging. So it is the blue box, which is, you know, supposedly one of the identifiers for a legit unit. However, uh, the le legit units have a code written on the outside of the box which you can enter at the website to verify the authenticity of the um, pump. And this does not have it. It does have a uh, holographic sticker here and the seal is unbroken. However, uh, these are pretty easy to, uh, to reproduce is my guess. <clears throat> the label looks pretty legit here, made in the Czech Republic. Uh, Germany is spelled correctly. I think at one point I'd read that Germany was spelled incorrectly on the outset. So looking at the box, box looks pretty legit. However, as I say, I, I'm quite certain that this is a counterfeit pump and uh, I purchased it for $90 shipped on eBay. All right, let's open this guy up. Okay, so we've got a warning sheet and then we've got the pump itself in this uh, sealed package. So one of the things to look for right away, which I don't see on this pump, is that this seal here should have the Bosch logo somewhere. And this unit does not have that. So here are my two pumps. The one on the left is my original, actually my second eBay pump. And the one on the right is the uh, the third one that I most recently got. I'd kind of jacked around with this one trying to pop the top off so I could get to the internals, but I should probably just take a Dremel to it. Um, anyway, so that's been a little bit messed with. So let's take a look at this new one. I went ahead and pulled the check valve off so I could take a look. So yeah, a couple of things that we noticed right away. Let's talk about the good, I guess. So there's a helicoil on the back end. Printing here um, looks pretty decent. It, it looks to me like it's stamped, but um, the quality of, of this is definitely lower than my other pump. This may be a dot matrix style printer here. Uh, the other one looked a little bit better in terms of looking more like a stamping. You can see how the Lettering is much more defined. However, text-wise position, everything looks identical between the two in terms of the text and the little Bosch symbol there. In uh, all the photos of the legit pumps that I've seen, there's always been a paint mark of some kind or a marker here where the crimp is. And usually um, <clears throat> what happens is at the end of the quality inspection line, they'll add a little paint, paint mark there just to indicate that that particular pump has been through some type of inspection. This crease right over here looks pretty sharp. Uh, it doesn't look rolled, it looks like it's been pinched together uh, and this material has just been deformed. So yeah, sharp crease here. And then looking at the staking operation here, that's very sharp. You can see the ridge from the tool. Same with that side. Let's take a closer look at these posts here. You can see that the positive and the negative are both equal length. Uh, the positive is slightly larger diameter. And then looking at the top here, this looks like a really cheap die cast part. So let's take a look down inside. 
these pumps here. So this is the discharge we're looking at. This is uh, my second eBay pump. You can see it was pretty nasty in terms of the machining. And look at this guy. Incredibly, it's even worse. But the post in the middle, posts along the exterior, they look the same. Pretty poor machining. Lots of clearance between the uh, internal post and the four exterior protrusions. And the other thing to note too is if you look at the ejection pin marks, that's these small little circles here in this relief, both the positive and the negative have these small round circular impressions. These are the ejector marks from the plastic injection molding machine. I believe in one of the photos that I saw with the legitimate pump, the ejector pins are much larger. In fact, only about half the pin is visible on the part itself. And I don't know what this means, but when I shake this pump, you can hear the internals rattling around. Probably not a good thing. So there you have it. This is what a fake Bosch 044 pump looks like circa, let's see, I purchased this in April 2019. Now I will say that the um, seller on eBay was very careful not to use the words genuine Bosch pump. They put a bunch of photos on there and they say, Take a look at the photos. I'm doing the best that I can. I'm happy to take more photos for you. Essentially, it's a buyer beware thing. But they definitely do claim that this is a Bosch 044 unit.